Okay, uh, members of the board and community, thank you. Uh, Mrs. McGuera is um, absent physically, but I can see that she's online. Uh, so I'll ask Mrs. McGuera and Dr. Beeler to chime in if by chance uh, I omit something from the uh, school district proposed budget uh, for the 22-23 fiscal year. So when we look at our fiscal spending plan for the 22-23 school year, it's broken down into our revenue. And we've identified uh, the six main categories of revenue for the district. And these are in descending order, state aid, um, uh, indigenous tuition aid, impact aid, fund balance, miscellaneous property tax, miscellaneous uh, categories and property taxes. Unlike many other districts, our property tax value is the lowest revenue uh, stream, unlike other districts. So we're pretty proud of that. There we go. Um, our state aid revenue uh, breakdowns, um, basically for the revenues, we have 24,823,757 th dollars and 80 cents. Um, so that includes our basic state aid, our BOCES aid, our excess, excess pupil cost aid, transportation, building debt, hardware, and textbooks for a total of state revenues of $24.8 million. Our revenue tax related deals with property taxes. Again, this is our lowest form of revenue of $250,000. There are some payments in lieu of taxes, interest and penalties. Um, a large category is our federal impact aid, as well as our impact aid for students with disabilities. Our other, other revenue tax related accounts for uh, $5,913,898.84. Our miscellaneous level of revenue includes uh, uh, a list of about 15 items or so that deals with tuition for adult education or driver ed reimbursements, other student fees, tuition, day school, other districts, transportation, other districts, transportation, BOCES, uh, other services for the district and governmental entities, interest and earnings, and so on and so forth. This level of miscellaneous revenue accounts for $548,000. There we go. Our revenue fund balance reserves account for $3.7 million. This is our uh, use of fund balance to reduce the tax levy. Our ERS employee retirement reserve, our unemployment reserve, our technology commitment fund, and our worker comp reserve. As we know from previous presentation, Mrs. McGarry has outlined our long range fiscal plan and how much we will annually allocate for the multitude of reserve accounts to deal with unexpected changes and fluctuations in the market. Our res revenue reserves accounts for $3.7 million. Our revenues from our indigenous tuition contract with New York State, including tu tuition and transportation, account for $12,389,100. The budget is broken down into three main categories. Administrative, what we need to do and the funds we need to allocate to operate the district. Our capital component, which is uh, the allocation 
provide a safe, healthy, and learning environment for students, staff, and the community, and their program component, which essentially is our instructional plan. These expenses by category are listed as follows. Salary in descending order, in, uh, descending order. salary, fringe, debt service, OCS expenditures, materials and supplies, equipment and contractual. <clears throat> And as you can see on the slide, our salaries account for $20,409,000. Our fringe benefits, all of the benefits and contractual entitlements that we have for our employees is 9.9 .9 million. Our debt service and transfer is 3.6 million. Our BOCES expenditures is $6,319,000. Approximately $1.3 million for materials and supplies approximately $1.7 million for equipment and vehicles and other contractual expenses for $4,099,000. When we look at the percent of our expenses in those three state aid categories, our program expenditures, all of our program is 74% for $35,324,000. Our capital component is $7 million one hundred thirty one thousand dollars and that accounts for 15 percent of our expenditures and our administrative cost to operate and run the district is 4.9 million or 11 percent if you go back year to year budget to budget these numbers are pretty consistent however i do believe if you look over a historical perspective we have increased our program expenditure to put more money in the classrooms and the staff members serving those students from an academic component. When we take a look at the administrative detail, these list all of the expenditures within the administrative category, the Board of Ed expenses, district clerk, meetings, votes, superintendent, the business office, auditor, treasurer, and so on and so forth. The actual expenditures for the administrative component, if we go back one slide, sorry. Slide. The administrative component is 11% for $4.9 million. And those expenditures are listed on this slide here, $4.978 million. If we look at our program details, what it costs us to run the district, these program costs include legal expenditures, security of the plant, central processing, insurance, curriculum, supervision, in-service, salaries of teaching, regular school, regular classroom teachers, special education instructional programs, BOCES, career tech ed, special schools like Randolph uh, Children's Home, Randolph Academy, um, library expenditures, computer assisted programming, or technology platform, attendance staff, guidance staff, health, psychology services, social work, and our liaisons. If we look, you can see that our program expenditures also include co-curricular activities, athletics, transportation, the bus garage, contracted transportation for routes or programs that we do not provide transportation to, our retirement reserves for our retirement contributions for the employee retirement service, civil service staff, or our TRS, our teacher retirement system for all of our instructional staff, social security benefits, workers' comp, unemployment insurance, regular insurance, health, dental, and flex plans, as well as transfer to special aid and our school lunch fund. Our program expenditure, 74%, <laughs> is $35.3 million. And lastly, rounding out our capital expenses include the operation of plant or utilities, maintenance of our plants, BOCES capital reserve expenses, portions of our ERS, portions of our TRS based on the employees covered under capital expenditures. Again, Social Security workers' comp for those individuals and our capital expenditures and our capital investment equals $7.1 million. Overall, the um, budget includes no additional levy to the community that remains flat as it has uh, since 2013. Important to note, the school district has not raised property taxes since 2011 fiscal year, and we've maintained that and we expect that that will continue. If by chance on May 17th, if the community rejects this spending plan, then we have the option of going to a contingent budget. We don't get to um, adjust the budget. We can put the same budget back up 
for vote again at the exact same amount, or we could come back and reduce the budget. But if we stay with the contingent budget, that means the community cannot use any of our facilities for free. That means that uh, we cannot uh, go forward with our capital purchases for buses and transportation, which I believe we're looking at six transportation vehicles. Okay, uh, so we would not be able to maintain our fleet uh, repurchasing and retiring of older vehicles to get newer, more efficient, safer vehicles. Uh, we would not have non-union or non-certified uh, salary increases, and we would not be able to transfer capital um, as part of the budget. Uh, so it's important that the community ask questions. It's important that they know that we are actually reducing our total expenditure, although we are adding 21 additional staffing positions. So I would challenge the community to find another district that is adding 21 instructional positions 21 positions to their district and having a lower budget to budget um, vote. Um, the vote for the budget includes a proposition to create a capital reserve proposition. This is essentially a $25 million piggy bank for us to use for future referendums, for future, future capital expenditures in the district. Another uh, referendum for additions to our athletic facilities, uh, pre-K building, a new transportation facility. This is long range planning. The term of the capital reserve proposition is 10 years. The maximum amount that can go into the fund is a total of $25 million over the lifespan of the 10 years. This requires voter approval to implement and it requires voter approval to have a deduction or withdrawal from the capital reserve proposition, capital reserve account. And lastly, the vote is May 17th from noon till 9 p.m. in the high school gymnasium. And that concludes our capital presentation on the budget. If there are any questions, I'm happy to entertain them. Yeah, I do. So let's go back to slide number nine. Um, Levi, do you want to go back to what? what is the slide title item? Uh, expenses by category chart. Okay. You touched on buses. So I'm just curious, where does the uh, Buses come from purchasing new buses, transportation, where is all that? Uh, I believe that goes into the uh, program component. Uh, vehicles are actually under equipment and vehicles. That's the one point seven million yes. dollars. I'm sorry. Okay. When yep. you is that what you meant? Which category? Or yeah, where yeah, exactly. Actually, where well, where does it come from? Um, and how does this play in? You touched on the buses. How does this play in with regulation or new legislation about where to electric? This does not include any consideration or discussion for electric vehicles at this point. Um, there has been some movement and some conversation on a statewide level um, with the business officials and much smaller for the superintendents. It just hasn't trickled out yet. Uh, I don't believe there's any substantial details on how this is going to play as of yet, but this does not include any plan for electric buses at this point. Okay. But when we think about long term planning, at some point when we talk about all this with capital projects, we've got to start looking at new infrastructure for electric charging stations. Yes. Um, and obviously, we all know that we're going to do renovations at the bus ramps. So, at some point, we need to start thinking about this needs to be new infrastructure. We did meet on this um, about two weeks ago, the Transportation Department, and this is McGarren, went out with a consultant. At this point in time, the buses are considerably more expensive. They're about 80% more. Um, and the distance that they can travel uh, really impedes our ability to move. So there are a lot of factors here that need to be considered. Um, everything from, you know, if we're taking a bus ride to New Spain, we're going to have to stop the charge somewhere. Uh, it's, it's surprising. So some technology advances have to be made, but you're absolutely right. We have to have the infrastructure in place for with, even if it's buses or other vehicles, uh, let alone just the buses. So that is on the radar. Um, we're, but it is just at this point just on the radar. We, we may see more positive movement just kind of in a philosophical plane with vehicles that would not be considered buses like minivans uh, or passenger vans or uh, sedan type of vehicles. But from a, a, even a minibus uh, or certainly a large 66 passenger bus, the technology just isn't there to meet the rules for electronic needs uh, for a charged bus. 
yet. But I, I think this is an aspirational recommendation on the part of the state, as well as you know many industries. But we're we're a few years away from implementation. When is this supposed to take effect? Is it like ten years from now? Or? I've heard I've heard different dates. Um, so I'd have to get back to you. But I, at one point in time, I heard twenty. 35? Yeah. yeah. Well, by 2027, you're looking at all your customers with zero emission. Which isn't a deal. <laughs> and I would imagine once some of these um, things start to shake out at a statewide level, this will be a topic that will continue to revisit. It is part of the state's farmers plan. I'm sure that it will be tied to future aid increases. There will have to be movement on the state part for transportation aid. None of that stuff is known. So I would I would lump this into an aspirational goal, kind of a moonshot, uh, if you will, in the part of Albany. Uh, it's not it's not a bad idea. It's just there's no way 712 school districts in the state could convert it to uh, so uh, we'll, 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 we'll put a pin in that one to see, you know, well, if that the only reason out. I ask, and I know it's a long ways out, but if Karen was here, she'd be asking about long range planning. So this is more right into it. That's yes. I know Lotus Karen's not here, so Mark and I are like, well, that's later on. Right. <laughs> we can channel her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we might want to look at the chat. We she do not want to look at the chat. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Karen is right. I mean, if this is going to come, we, we need to start having this conversation about how we make that transition. And to me, it seems logical that we start with any vehicle that's not a bus, and then we start to build our infrastructure for the charging stations. Right now, there was a charging station behind the bus garage. I understand that's been disconnected because this infrastructure in the grid couldn't handle it. But that's, that's a citywide issue as well. So back to the, the expenses by category charge, you mentioned we had 1.7 million in there. How many buses are we looking at this year? Uh, six vehicles, I believe. Six or eight. I buses think six buses and then I thought two million Yeah, it's right six buses. buses. We're, the goal is to keep it on an eight year lifespan that maximizes the residual value. So as we're transitioning from what is really now probably an 11 to 13 year, Lifespan for the buses to that eight year plan, or you'll see, and we did see last year, a larger number of buses. Typically, we don't purchase between six and eight buses every year, but we're moving to that new cycle. I believe this is the last year. And then all of our buses will have a eight year lifespan with us. Um, the return on the investment with it will be more significant, as well as a reduction in maintenance and out of warranty. The market for surplus buses that still have life expectancy is exceptionally high at this point in time. Much higher than it's ever been in this environment. Are any of the buses that are ready to bring buses? Not at this point. No. <laughs> that would be a good conversation for the finance committee. <laughs> Come on, Karen. Who's going to be right here? She's going to be like, I can't even leave town. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Dave. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Eli, thanks for technical assistance as always. <laughs> and next we have our presentations for our retirees. So we have a number of retirees, and um, many of them are on uh, uh, on. Uh, property today, so we're excited to have them here. We do have some refreshments afterwards. So once we in, uh, introduce all of the retirees, we'll take a quick break for COVID-friendly cupcakes, so everybody gets their own cupcake. Um, and I'd like to start with Prospect Elementary School, and I'll turn it over to and I saw her, Ms. Provo. I have a plethora of individuals here tonight, and I use a big word. So should be proud of myself. Sometimes it's hard to get out of prospect language. But um, after seven years of working with these individuals, they are not only teachers, teacher assistants, or keyboard specialists, they are friends. Um, so it's hard to talk about friends and not get emotional because 
he and Bill a close bond when he worked that closely together. So um, with Pam Booth, she is one of our preschool teachers. She has uh, been a team leader, a family fun night extraordinaire, and field trip planner beyond belief. Pre-K has a requirement of multiple field trips throughout the year, so she has become an expert on not only doing it for the full day grant, but the half day grant at the same time, and, and just making sure we're doing all of that well, um, and always thinking outside of the box to help meet kids' needs. Um, on a personal note, we do love to run together, so we've run many half marathons, and we'll be able to continue that after um, she retires. So congratulations, Pam, and thank you for everything you've done for us. Next on my list is Barb Sharilla. Um, she has been a reading first coach, a reading interventionist, uh, after school, great support, um, oftentimes coordinating the after school, um, summer school um, coordinator, uh, coordinator of Dr. Seuss Week for I don't know how many years. Um, always looking for great authors. We actually have an author visit coming up soon that Barb has um, coordinated with uh, another reading interventionist, so we're excited to have that. Always pursuing to do what's best for reading for our kids, and always looking at the big picture of um, instruction, but then also the little pieces of what interventions are best to use. Um, always a phone call away with any questions um, or anything like that. So congratulations, Bob. Karen Edwards has been a teacher assistant for a long time. <laughs> she's, left, she's moved to multiple different rooms within the building. Um, so she may have had the most rooms um, across the building of anyone to date, including a little office in the locker room currently. <laughs> she has been a preschool TA. Uh, worked in classrooms and a one on one, always flexible and willing to do what's needed, and always willing to let me, let me know when I may have uh, stepped over some line that I didn't need to cross and like how we can solve it together. So, always there to, you know, have a good laugh, but also make sure we're all headed in a good direction. <laughs> Then I have uh, Chris Macchioni, the queen of books within our building. Um, and it's been just exciting to see everything change with the change in the library location. We didn't realize the impact of being in a dark space all day long. And that books just don't thrive as well uh, when they're hidden in a small space that's not as open. And so it's been great to see our library come to life and having Chris as a big part of the process and design and making sure that our all of our shelves are filled with great books for kids um, has been wonderful. Um, her love for books is passed on to the kids and it's just been great to see. Last year we couldn't use the library much and she was very flexible with what we needed to do there. Um, but it's been great to see the new library in use and it's um, much kudos to her for how it's set up and organized and that the kids can have finger, their fingers right on the books and very accessible. So thank you, Chris. I also have um, Tanya Thomas. She's on the call. Okay. So uh, Tan, Tanya Thomas, who we call Tammy, um, has been a great asset. She was a retired teacher. They came to work at um, our preschool. And it was wonderful to have someone with the teaching experience come right into the classroom and be there to support and help and be our biggest cheerleader for what's good for kids within the building. So congratulations, Cam. And I can't talk about Ellie because I'll cry. But that sums it all up. <laughs> um, Ellie is not here tonight, um, but many of you know when you work with a secretary uh, for a very long time, you become best friends um, in a lot of ways. 
And so that friendship is um, irreplaceable. It's your person that you kind of vent to. They're kind of your security box. They kind of take in, make you look good when you might be a little flustered. Um, and Ellie's been a prospect for an extremely long time and we greatly miss, um, but congratulations to her on her retirement. A Seneca retiree. This is Val, who retired um, early through the first marking period, so maybe a little bit after that. Um, I'll and just and she wasn't able to join us this evening, but I, I and I've said this before about Kim and, and Nikki. If you want to jump in, um, Kim as a teacher assistant with us for many years, um, similar to Sharon, was really the jack of all trades. They went, uh, Kim went wherever we asked her to with some of our uh, needier children or into classrooms at a moment's notice because a teacher needed to be somewhere else. And, and I think that truly is the, you know, the superpower of our teacher assistants. They go anywhere, whenever they're needed, oftentimes with virtually or no notice. And they do it with a smile. And certainly Kim uh, is in that category. Uh, I know she's been gone for a few weeks um, back around November. Uh, but we'll make sure that we connect with Kim. We do have a gift for Kim uh, as well. And I just want to uh, thank Kim personally for her years of service to our students and to uh, the students and staff at Seneca. Mr. Siebert. Uh, we have two of our high school staff um, that are here tonight. Uh, I'm going to be retiring shortly here in June. Um, and I already have something in my eyes. So. <laughs> um, but we can't quantify the number of years, or we can quantify the number of years that Kim Dry and GJ Pelsby worked in the district. Um, 32 for Kim, 21 for Jean. What is immeasurable, though, is the impact it had on our students, our school, our district, and our community. You know, every time I've run through this, I haven't cried. Now, all of a sudden, I hear it. <laughs> the number of lives they've touched, influenced, impacted, and improved is countless. And I'm going to start with Kim. I started working in Salamanca in February of 93. And I met Kim in February of 93. At that time, Kim and Lori John somehow talked me to coaching modified girls track. <laughs> I played baseball. <laughs> Since then, uh, I've worked with Kim, and I can truly say that in my eyes, there's uh, been no one that has done as much for our students, our school, and our community. She is one of a kind. Her willingness to help serve our students, families, and community is unparalleled. If you needed something done, Kim was always on board to lead it, help with it, or just do it. Kim's shoes are gonna be difficult to fill, and I'm trying to, uh, and I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. Uh, she's been a leader in our STEAM initiative, and I'm convinced uh, we'll not find someone that can do what she does. Although she has not coached in a while, she's been advisor to the Business Honor Society, Dr. B Club, Robotics. Currently, she's been running our student print shop. She teaches JCC classes, as well as many of her other business classes. Kim Dry is always Always it has been and always will be an epitome of a warrior and a warrior family. She is someone I truly admire and I strive to be more like. And although we are happy for her, we will miss her dearly in the halls of Sally High. Mr. <laughs> anytime, anytime. <laughs> Now, I met Jean in mid 90s. Uh, I was teaching seventh grade life science at the time. Uh, Jean was working for BOCES, uh, who helped run a program for our students at Camp Elegant. It was an overnight program, and we had seventh grade students from Salamanca and from other schools there. Um, and again, I'm surprised we got through it, but it was, it was a couple day program and uh, just had a phenomenal time. After that, we uh, rode back and forth together to graduate school. Uh, ultimately, as I ended up coming uh, to the high school and ultimately moving up uh, and becoming an administrator, he came and started teaching uh, 10th grade biology. And what I've learned quickly about Gene is that is he's always there and willing to help. 
I also learned that his stories are endless. <laughs> Whatever the topic, he has a story. I learned uh, that he has a dry sense of humor and that his jokes sometimes, sometimes take a little while and thought to understand. <laughs> Gene is definitely someone who takes initiative and has helped organize numerous activities, programs, and field trips. He's taken on many leadership roles and initiatives. He's been a longtime golf and bowling coach. Aside from teaching living environment, he's also taught at JCC Zoology. He's taken our drone classes to the next level, and he's been fully involved in our school, helping with safety planning, teaching our emergency medical class, and organizing kayaking trips. What Gene does on a daily basis to help our school run smoothly is indescribable. We wish him the very best in retirement, and he will be missed here. Thank you, Gene. Who has a speech? <laughs> uh, we do have um, uh, Mr. Neri here, uh, bowling assistant coach, and I believe there is um, a one more surprise in store for Mr. Jankowski. You come down here, man. We appreciate it. Um, as everybody knows, Gene's been bowl or coaching for bowling for 20 years. That's a lot of students and a lot of bowlers. I've had a chance to be coaching and working with them for the last 10 years. And I brought a few friends. Uh, <laughs> I put out the word, and some people wanted to come say hello. <laughs> I'd like to present you with this plaque that says, Dean Jankowski, teacher, coach, mentor, and friend. You will be showing us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This means a lot. Got uh, uh, the uh, all the names on paper, and I looked through them all, and I looked for all the great memories. So. There would have been more, but there was a lot of uh, finals for, for colleges and <laughs> universities and stuff like that. There were We're out of college. <laughs> 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 And some of them will start taking my money and all. Alicia, I didn't know what I brought up. Sharon, when Noel she would go to section with pom poms. I'm kind of happy when Noel graduated. <laughs> uh, somebody else inherited the pom poms, though. <laughs> So congratulations to all the retirees. Um, we do have one more retiree, which is Bob. Uh, as many of you know that he is going to be leaving it for well, yeah, just in there. And I'm sure he'll be bugging Lisa uh, <laughs> just as much as Alicia will be bugging Jean. <laughs> Get your honey do list prepared, right? With everything that you're gonna do. Um, what's funny is you know, Bob said he started in 2011, 2012, and you know we had the budget presentation, and back then our budget was $25 million. So who would have thought we would have grown $2 million a year? That's what the, the shoes that <laughs> Bob's leaving to pass over the mark is that we got to increase the budget by $2 million every year. So uh, that's kind of what our cycle has been. Uh, you know, but when we first started, you know, he was, he might have had a couple rough years to, you know, we're a unique district, right? We, we, uh, we have our own unique ways. And uh, I think the thing that I love about Bob is that we always tried to say, you know, like, what if? What if we could do this? And he always listened to us. And then he, he got on board and uh, 
ninety percent of the time we <laughs> embraced what we were talking about. You know, uh, and it starts with with the programming. You've seen how our budget for a program is, you know, thirty five million dollars. That's a lot for another district that's our size. And tell us who can invest in the programming that we've done. And uh, to be the leader, you have to surround yourself with good people. And that's what he did. And all the recordings here. So we're going to miss him. And I try to do an initial difference, but geez, it's hard. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a crier by nature, so I know it's real hard. But I look back at, you know, like what we've accomplished, the scene. Uh, you know, all the renovations we've done with Prospect for the high school. You know, we got rid of Seneca School, which Gary renovated on behalf of the nation, you know, and it's a beautiful building. But look at all the beautiful stuff that we've done and that we want to keep doing and planning for the future. And so I just want to say thank you for always embracing our what if ideas, uh, especially with that's part, you know. Um, we said, you know, what if we could lease that property, you know, then would we be able to renovate it? And luckily, you know, we could work with the nation and the city and all come together and do what's best for the community. And isn't that what we're all for is trying to build not only a better school district, but a better community. And I think when I look at the faces of the people retiring, that's what everybody here is trying to do. And it's it's really great. And it's, uh, you know, I'm sad to see people leave because, you know, Jean taught my girls to bowl. Uh, Jordan took a little longer. <laughs> but she got there, yeah. you know, and Kim's always trying to get me to run for mayor. So I guess you're doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> so tag your ass. You know, you know, and, <laughs> and Barb, you know, we went to France together, for God's sakes, and went on a train for however many days. Back in, I think it was what, 2014, many, many, many years ago. You know, so it's like I see all, all of you and I've had experiences and you're really going to be missed. And uh, not to take words from you, Bob, because we're really going to miss you. And, you know, you've been that leader. You spearheaded a lot of these projects. You've taken what I've said literally. I, I think my favorite uh, thing that Bob ever took literally is when we were doing Bud Spark, I used to joke and say, Hey, I want a gate at the back of my house so I can just walk right into Bud's Park. And Mark called me one time. He goes, Are you serious about getting a gate right there? He goes, Because Bob really thinks you are. And I said, Well, you know, I don't think it looks so good. If I do that. But if I'd asked him, I'm sure Bob would have done it for me. And, then, and so I'm, I'm really going to miss him. Uh, you know, he really. We're always an advocate for the kids, whether it's uh, letting, uh, when our Native American teams came and said they want to wear their regalia, you were all for it. When the kids came and, and gave us a presentation about flying the, the pride flag, you know, right there again, you were there to support them. And so you always put the kids first. And that's, I think, what, what I really admire. And um, I'm really going to miss you. And I wish you nothing but the best. So, thank you. I just wanted to add to that too. Um, I've been here for seven years in the school board, almost seven years, and been working with Bob. We've, we've had our ups and downs, we've had our rocky times, we've had our good times. You know, but I think the biggest thing to look at is our district is on the rise, and it's been on the rise for a number of years. Um, you know, a lot of that is credit to Bob and listening, you know, and taking action when, uh, as a board, we've said, we want to do this, we want to do that, we want to move forward, we want to try this. And sometimes he says, well, you know, that's not, that's, that's not the greatest idea, let's modify it, let's tweak it, and let's figure out the greatest idea. You know, that's, that's been a really good collaboration working with him this time, you know, for these years. Um, like I said, we don't always see eye to eye, but when we get to the end of it, it was always for the betterment of our district and for the betterment of the kids here, you know, making better learners. And I always ask, you know, how are we making our kids smart? You know, that's one of the things that's constantly talked about when we have our executive meetings or when we run our retreats. Usually it's 
It's thrown out there within the first half hour. I gotta ask the question. <laughs> How are we making our kids smarter? You know, and he always has an answer. He's always responding. We're doing this, we're doing that. So, you know, I want to say thank you. You know, these seven years have been pretty good. I think our district is moving in the right direction. Everything we're doing, it just gets better and better every single year. Um, I do like the fact that uh, when we did have our meetings, Bob took my idea and ran with it. A few years back, you know, there was a time when a lot of complaints came. And as board members, we feel those complaints from the community. Honestly, that's why we're elected. We've got to hear from the community. We've got to hear from the staff. We've got to hear from the students. We've got to hear from everybody. Well, I had a list compiled at one of our retreats. And jokingly, I said, all right, this retreat, we're going to create Festivus. And we're going to have airing of grievances. Those Seinfeld fans are what I'm talking about. <laughs> it was just one of the things that we just started talking about in one of the retreats. And all of a sudden, every retreat, Bob's asking, all right, what do we got for Festivus? Yeah. What do we got for Festivus? What do we got for Festivus? And we we have a list and we go over the things that we've heard that were wrong and we try to fix them and we take time to actually do it and Bob would implement it. So a lot of credit to that. You know, it started off as kind of a, I'll say it was a negative thing. You know, I want to air your grievances. I want to get down to the nitty gritty. We turned it into a positive, you know, and I'm glad he had an open mind and actually listened and we, we did move forward with that. So thank you. And I share that with my superintendent and colleagues. They are, we have festivist meetings and they look at me like I'm insane. But I have to tell you, Carrie, in all candor, that has been one of the most productive things as a board that we've done so that we get to the real part of the issues. And I, I thank you for all kidding aside, and we never got the feats of strength. So um, <laughs> almost, almost. <laughs> there were a few times where it almost got to that point. But I mean, good, effective boards and strong leadership teams work through the difficulties. And I thank you, Carrie, for helping to make us a better district and a better board. Thank you. Thank you. And again, just, just so you know, this is, this is my running list. This is real. Yeah. I check them off as we go. But thanks, Bob. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're gonna do a roast, but then cut the camera. <laughs> Thank you. Let me just make a couple notes. You know, retirements are very personal um, because they affect individuals in a pretty profound manner. And retirements in a school setting also truly affect the rest of the school community. Tonight, we're celebrating the retirement of several very valued school family members. And while I'm happy for each one of the retirees, there's a portion of me that's really sad to see them leave our school. And I think many of us feel that way. Mr. Bridenstine has been serving the Salamanca community for 11 years. During this time, the district has seen an incredible amount of growth and success. I firmly believe the district, the community, and most importantly, our students have reaped the benefit of Bob's work and that his legacy will continue to grow for many years to come. On a professional and personal level, I thank each one of our retirees and Bob for your service. You got it. Okay. <laughs> I came on the school board not knowing it. And um, it's been a real pleasure working with you these last four years. And um, you taught me a lot about what's going on in this area. And uh, we all appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise, Bob. <laughs> it's been a pleasure, pleasure working with you over the past six years. Um, um, it's, you know, there were some, some, a lot of rocky, you know, moments throughout, you know, throughout, you know, our, our board existence here for the last six, six years. But um, really, you know, we have gelled as a board, and uh, I give you credit for, for bringing us all, all together. And um, we are going to. So um, I was, you know, Lisa and I were talking last night and, and she asked how it was and I said, you know, I'm really 
good and comfortable with my decision and in a leadership role they always say you know when it's time you know when you're hurt you know when you're mind you know when you're level of what's next and i'm very comfortable as i'm sure our retirees are that we wrestle with these decisions um and there's been many sleepless nights and i wonder what if and as i look back on the what became and teresa's right we spent a lot of time talking about what if and then we started talking about how can we and then we get to look at what we did and that's park i thought you were going to mention the jumbotron yeah now. originally we had the wow. jumbotron and then we had a jumbo jumbo <laughs> truck the largest scoreboard in new york state although i am told in texas standard it's like TV football size <laughs> <laughs> And I look back and, and I think what I'm most proud of is the fact that Salamanca recognized the inherent good of our community and our staff. And we actively went out and made our staff that was here better. We went out and pursued people that were connected to the district and we gave them a forum to come back home. And we surrounded ourselves with exemplary people in each of our classrooms, on our buses, in our cafeterias, at our board table, in our administrative cabinet meetings. And I think one of the things that we can be most proud of is that while other districts have spent time wondering what could be, we actually got to work and made it a reality. And you know, there, there are lots of things that I'm proud of. I'm proud of our graduation rate increasing, but that's a function of everybody in the district. It's not a function of me. I'm proud of the fact that as a superintendent, I have never raised taxes. There aren't many superintendents who can say that. And we've increased programming and we've increased our investment in our staff. I'm proud that we brought in $160 million over the last nine years to indigenous districts in Western New York being the first district to get impact aid. But I think what I'm most proud of is that the legacy of success um, is back in the district, and I'm very proud to have been a small, small part of that. And from the bottom of my heart, the bottom of my family's heart, I thank you for what, without a second hesitation, has been the best part of my 30 plus years of education by being a salmate order. And I profoundly thank you. Okay. Enough of the mushy stuff. <laughs> we are going to take a short break for cupcakes. Please come down and help yourself. All right. Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> cupcakes server.
So just a brief uh, update on some safety issues. Uh, over the past two weeks, we've seen an increase in the number of positive cases of COVID-19. These numbers are not alarming, um, but they do parallel a trend throughout Cattaraugus County and the rest of uh, Western New York. I just want to assure our staff members, our students, the grown-ups in the community that we are <coughs> continuously monitoring all of the cases and are in regular communication with the local Department of Health. Should we get to an area of concern or a number of concerns, we will go right back and follow the directions that are provided to us from uh, the local Department of Health. On another topic, which is also falls under safety, the high school, our Warrior Academy, and most troubling Seneca Intermediate have seen an alarming and exponential growth in the number of students in possession and using marijuana or THC vape devices while on our campuses. Over the next several weeks, our administrators and staff are going to be collaborating to develop a proactive education plan, as well as to develop a task force to combat this problem. These numbers that we've seen, we have never seen numbers um, at the level that we're at right now. And I think that that's a concern throughout our school district and throughout the community. And we have had several conversations up to this point over things that we need to do but it's time to take some formal action and put a task force together that will proactively educate and then remediate these concerns that we're starting to see with our students. So I just wanted to share that information with the board as well as the rest of you. And in that vein, uh, this week, um, I tasked the assistant principals in the district to collaborate on revisions to the district's uh, code of conduct and to have that ready for presentation in uh, second meeting in June. Uh, for the board to you know, have uh, an opportunity to provide some input into that. So that will be coming soon to a theater near you for revisions to the code of conduct. And Dr. Dillard is right. Uh, the rate of uh, an instance of students with uh, uh, marijuana related paraphernalia or possession has grown significantly, uh, in no small part, I'm sure, due to the prevalence of dispensaries. And this is something that I think most school districts will be wrestling with in the uh, immediate future. So stay tuned for that. Any other questions? I just have a comment on that. Can we also include the word cannabis? There's been a lot of different associations with the word marijuana and racism and so forth. So I mean, it's, they're both interchangeable. So I mean, cannabis and marijuana, but to be more accurate to the plant itself, we use cannabis. <laughs> New York State has the Office of Cannabis Management. I happen to work in the world of cannabis too. So just, just keep those terminologies because we're going to educate certain words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do we have anybody for public comment besides the person who was going to present? Uh, and then do we have anybody for Title Six here? First, anyone? Okay, so then we're going to have the class of 2023. Fire away. Fire down. Okay. So stand up and project. Whenever you feel comfortable. Whenever you feel comfortable. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> 
So introduce yourself, and then it sounds like Faith is going to be the MC. Sure thing. Okay. Okay. I'm Faith Long. I'm Vice President of Festival 15. I'm Sydney John. I'm the President. I'm Grace Vera. I'm the Co Treasurer and Vice President. So we're here tonight to ask to dedicate the new Prospect Library to Miss Sydney. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry. Um, we're here tonight to ask to dedicate the new Prospect Library to Mrs. Sydney Moore. Dear Board of Education and Administration, as you know, the class of 2023 has earned a scholarship fund in memory of Mrs. Cindy Moore with funds raised from the Cindy Moore Memorial 5K. Mrs. Moore spent many years teaching at Prospect School and dedicated her life and time educating and positively impacting the lives of thousands of Salamanca children and families. Her dedication didn't end once you left. Once you left her classroom, Mrs. Moore came to sporting events, plays, band shows, art shows, and science fairs to support former students. The class of 2023 would like to see Mrs. Moore honored for her service to so many children, and reading and literacy was one of her passions. We remember dear time, reading centers, and all of the great stories read to us and with us in her classroom. We are in full support of the Prospect Elementary School Library being dedicated to Mrs. Cindy Moore. A teacher who meant so much to our community and impacted our lives. Thank you for your consideration. So, um, for the students, uh, so you're aware, um, about 15, maybe 18 months ago, the board uh, developed a policy for dedications, namings, and memorials. So, this would fall under a dedication. So the board will convene a committee, which I would recommend to be the president, the vice president, the site administrator of where the dedication might go, which in this case would be Ms. Pavone, uh, and Mr. Pinkowski, the director of facilities, so we make sure that we get the mechanics correct, uh, and then myself. Um, and then we'll get together and then we'll review this and then uh, make a recommendation. I think board members, if we can find a time in the next week or so, we can do a quick Zoom meeting together and talk about this and then um, provide feedback as early as the meeting on the 17th to the board. Because I know there is a um, an event coming up on, yes. on uh, June 12th. Can you guys talk on that? Because I know you're involved with that. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, actually, so on June 12th, we're doing simultaneously a chicken barbecue and a 5K front walk that we second K. Yes, it's like man, we started it last year. It took a lot of planning and a lot of work, but I think the turnout, especially post, not really post COVID, but kind of in that summer, um, people are kind of being able to come out of their homes and actually do things for once, which was nice. Um, the turnout was really good. It was a good event. You, I mean, you see community members, students, her old students, students who didn't have her, but still were impacted by her um, come out and just celebrate her and her life and her legacy because she really was an amazing human being. I think we made about fifteen thousand mm dollars -hmm. from it yeah. just by people coming to support the cause. And those proceeds go to our class as well as a memorial scholarship that we um, created last year. So we give that out once a year to two, two seniors. seniors that had her. Yes. And that's when you're able to give three scholarships and how much money we were able to in the scholarship funds, we get to keep that going. Yeah, so three scholarships last year. Can you do me a Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Introduce yourself. I'm Mrs. John. I'm a class advisor. Thank you for your leadership. And then uh, we'll, we'll circle back uh, as soon as we can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do not believe we have the word. Don't worry about it. We can move on to uh, the central office message. I don't know if Erin has anything she wants to share or. Yeah, um, just going back to the bus thing that Carrie was talking about, we need to have um, our game plan together and start purchasing buses by 2027 and then have our full fleet 
um, of buses electric by 2035. So we have a, a large road ahead of us, but there's really been no guidance yet issued. And who knows, um, I can't really see it happening in that, even though it seems like, you know, 2035 is a long time from now. I, I, can, I really can't see it happening in that quick of a turnaround when there are, you know, hundreds of school districts that have hundreds of buses and, you know, we're only one state that may want to be doing this. So um, I will have more on that once I find out more. I'm, I'm waiting on a few um, uh, proposals with regards to an electrical engineering study that we'll need to have, which will be really kind of the first step to see if the electrical grid in this area can even handle it, um, which I'm being told right now that it can't. So what do we need to, to do in order to make it handle it um, and that kind of thing. Um, other than that, uh, status quo, um, just trying to meet all the deadlines that we have and moving along. Thank you. Thanks for being So we'll turn it over to Dr. Beeler. How do you know I had something? All right. <laughs> so this week we celebrate the hard work and dedication of our educators. While it's important to have a singular opportunity to acknowledge their work, we really should be appreciative of our educators throughout the entire year. I personally want to take a moment to say thank you and hope that we as a district can demonstrate our respect for each and every one of you, no matter what the week is. Last week, we concluded our state testing in mathematics. Um, we had a alarming number of test refusals in some of our grades, and I just wanted to extend my appreciation to Mrs. Beaver, Mrs. Berry, and Mr. Long for their work in reminding our students and grown-ups of the importance of the assessments for both determining individual progress but also for programmatic success. Um, we are in the process of recruiting educators for our summer programming. We have some critical shortages in the high school and are, and <clears throat> are at about 45 percent of the staffing necessary for our elementary school summer programs. I encourage any of our educators who are able to provide summer support to our students to let their building administrators know as soon as practical. As we've been saying this year, um, the, that we will be remanding students who are significantly below grade level to summer school. Students and families have been contacted or will be contacted in the very near future if there are concerns over the progress of their students. I also wanted to take a moment to commend our students and our performing arts coaches uh, on the musical this past weekend. It is great to see our students and our community enjoying the performing arts after a two year hiatus. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to our Board of Education message. Might as well start at the end, Dale. That's me. That's you. <laughs> um, I just want to uh, say thanks to all the retirees um, and all the teachers in general um, um, for giving your all to our students, you know, year in and year out, and for, you know, um, what your textures really makes us, you know, a, a stronger district, and um, I, I, I just want to thank and Bob, and thank you too. Um, I also want to say, um, class of 2023, um, you got my support, I can't tell you, um, on, on a personal note, uh, Ms. Moore was, was uh, a driving force for my son to get his PhD and you know, to be excited in reading and writing. And uh, now he's teaching that at, at the development of funds. So um, you have my. Thank you. Thanks, Dale. Jess? I just want to say thank you to all the retirees. Thank you, Bob. Your retirement been short <laughs> I've been able to work with you thank you to all the teachers you know there's a lot of different events all month so I, I believe this month is almost like teacher month like birthday month um, I keep seeing all these different flyers of all kinds of things so I just say go to all the events enjoy it all thank you thank you to the board our administration and the community um, my service here was very brief thank you to Meg and everyone else I too um, would like to thank the students for appreciating their teachers. Uh, I, I think we just always take them for granted. And uh, without them, 
I don't think you will appreciate it until you get a little older. What you missed in school because you didn't think it was good. And um, Selmaker has a lot of things to offer the, um, the kids, and uh, I hope they take full advantage of that. And that's about it. The rest of the people are all just tired. I don't even feel like I'm going to be up with that problem. <laughs> I don't want to work either. <laughs> I want to give all my appreciation. I appreciate my appreciation. We obviously appreciated throughout the year. Uh, congratulations to all the retirees. Uh, the thing I appreciated most about Bob is anytime he can remember James and the other fellows. I don't know uh, story about this is dry when she started. She's the only teacher that's ever had me and my brother in the same classroom in high school, and I think it lasted about eight weeks before she picked out the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so Danny could stay. Rest of our um, yeah, same thing. I want to, you know, thank all the retirees. Uh, thank Bob. All of you put in a tremendous amount of service to the district and they didn't go unnoticed. Um, nurses week starts Friday, goes through next week. I want to thank our nurses. Um, you know, I don't think any of them are here online, but thank you anyway. Uh, they do a phenomenal job, especially these last two years through COVID. Uh, I, give, I give them a lot of credit. And of course, you know, teacher appreciation week. You know, I appreciate teachers 365 days a year. Um, Mrs. John up there knows that. She might be in my top five teachers, but <laughs> uh, no, my favorite teacher. Um, appreciate her every day of the week. Uh, appreciate all of you every day of the week. And especially this week when you get a recognition week of your own. Uh, thank you all. Uh, Mrs. Cindy Moore, I, I echo Dale. Full sport. Love the idea. Can't wait to see it happen. You know, she she had a connection with all of us in my family. Um, she was my second grade teacher. And then she taught three of our older children. My wife did her student teaching with her. Uh, we've had a connection with her for a long time. So I couldn't be more supportive of reading in the library after. Um, I forgot what else I was going to say. Oh, right. Uh, uh, words right out of my mouth. <laughs> All right, I'll take another turn in a few minutes. <laughs> I also would like to uh, thank the teachers. Um, you know, they, the teachers, especially in our community, they go above and beyond. And uh, they're the first ones that they not only educate our kids, but if they see our kids are struggling or they see our kids need something, they're the first ones to organize and get together and make sure that the kids have everything that they want. And, um, they don't just say at the end of the day, they've gone, you know, many of them are, are coaches, they, they volunteer for uh, our extracurricular activities, you know, they're involved in our community. And um, it makes our school a better place because we know that the teachers care about the students that they're teaching. And it's not just a, it's the end of the day, I'm going home. They spend their own money to buy supplies for the classroom. They spend their own money to do special things for the kids. And um, just trying to recognize and say thank you. You know, it's that whole encompassing of what they do for our students. So it is a thank you for taking the time and to raise our kids uh, because they spend a lot of time with our with our children and they're teaching them so it's it's awesome that we have teachers in our community that care so much so thank you uh, as far as cindy moore you definitely have my support uh, i don't know who knows but cindy is my sister-in-law and so she had a special place in our heart um, i was also lucky enough that all of my daughters had cindy, cindy. Uh, so and she, of course, was her favorite teacher, uh, and, and, but, uh, you know, Cindy really had a huge impact 
She loved to read. She tried to share that with her grandchildren. Uh, she always read to them. She came back for when we had standard workshops and always tried to do crafts with the kids. Uh, and when kids would see her, um, you know, they would always run up and give her a hug. So she was a great person. I definitely am 100% in support of that. So, um, go ahead and talk about it. So, <laughs> Just a couple of things. Um, I do want to uh, congratulate the students and staff that did put on uh, the wonderful uh, Little Shop of Horrors last weekend. Um, as Mark had noted, that the drama club, because of COVID, took a two-year hiatus, so we are glad to see them back. Um, when you have the inclusion of arts and music and dance and choreography and um, and theater, it really is a shining example of why the arts help make us a well run uh, school district. So I want to thank the students from those who were in the pit and the adults who were in the pit, um, to the stage crew, to the lighting, production, uh, technical folks. Uh, all of those things make the actors and actresses on stage look wonderful, uh, as well as the students who are on stage giving countless hours to entertain the community. It was really a uh, a uh, delightful show. So we're, we're looking forward to the drama club getting back into full swing. So we want to thank them. Um, for teacher appreciation, we really in our world, we're all teachers. Um, our bus drivers are the ambassadors of first impressions and last good nights as students come and go every single day. Um, they are the feeders of both the body and the soul, going through the cafeteria and menders and healers of boo-boos and injuries with our nurses and purveyors of curiosity and inquiry and really creating the leaders of tomorrow by giving them every platform which they can succeed. Uh, this week, Dr. Beeler and I are uh, working with a company that we're going to partner with to create some really unique accelerated opportunities for our secondary students from uh, credit accruals to additional individualized PP courses. Uh, so we're looking very much forward to that exciting opportunity for some of our secondary students. Uh, and so we'll have more to report on that, but um, I, I do want to also echo, I think what most of us have said is that I too support the dedication of the library to Sydney Moore. Uh, when I started here 11 years ago, she was one of the first, if not the first person that reached out to me to welcome me to the district and say, if you have any questions, my door is always open. Um, and so I uh, fully support uh, endorsing and dedicating the library to Cindy. I couldn't think of a better, more deserving person who's impacted more lives through her teaching career and her example as a person. So I, I think that's a pretty good choice. Um, while I did um, take it as a liberty, kind of, you know, after 11 years, I think I have a pretty good pulse of where the board is going to land on some issues. So I did take the opportunity to reach out to the architect to um, get me some samples and some mock ups of what the uh, dedication signage would look like. And I'm hoping to have that within the next uh, day or two or three, uh, over that we set. So uh, we should be able to have. Assuming that everything goes according to plan, uh, at least the ability at the um, the 5K uh, run block of time uh, to have uh, uh, somewhat of a dedication. Thank you. That's it. All right. <laughs> We move on to. Uh, I remember what about Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> time's up. Good yeah. news. Uh, May seventeenth, big vote. Yes. Come on out. Tell all your friends. Get the voting. Get the voting booths. What is it? Noon to nine. 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 Yeah. Yep. Nine. All right. Tell all your friends. Here in the public. Uh, in the gym. 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 <laughs> yes. Now we have our opening the polls at noon. If I can. You're always the first vote, so you, you, you can't break the street. Exactly. All right, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. So I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion. Motion by Carrie. Second. Second by Brad. Are there any questions? 
Yeah, I'm going to ask Karen about the cafeteria profit and loss again. <laughs> well, I'll give her a break since she's not here. Okay. All right, we have a motion by Carrie, second by Brad. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. Uh, item six are our policies. So we need a motion uh, to approve policy 7231. Motion. Motion by Dale. Second. Second by Carrie. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. We have no new business. Item eight is our personnel consent agenda. So we need a motion to approve the personnel consent agenda. Mm -hmm. Motion by Sue. We need a second. Second. Second by Dale. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. We have, we have several individuals that are online or here for tenure appointments. So if we can start with Mr. Siebert or Ms. Martinez, Ms. Norcus, and Ms. Vanderhoof. And Mr. G, I got them all. Mr. G, you, all right, you've got your I got you. Yeah. Um, so I first want to introduce uh, Mrs. Martinez, uh, and uh, she's actually here today. Um, she has brought stability to the Spanish department that for years saw uh, immense turnover. Ms. Martinez has uh, been a leader among the staff in restorative practices and trauma and important care. These practices are reflected in the lessons she teaches and also how she interacts with the students. In her classroom, she sets the tone and culture of the room by using these practices to create a safe environment where students are able to take risks and venture out of their comfort zone while still being supported and encouraged. Ms. Martinez is a team player who is always willing to help out and continually seeks to improve her craft and teaching. It would be a great pleasure to not only recommend, but to interview Corey Martinez as a tenant. No. <laughs> yeah. This is your you, moment. Before the moment, you're coming down, you got to have a speech. And then online, we have uh, Mr. Cannon. Uh, Mr. Cannon has created a very engaging technology class. He uses the engineering by design philosophy in which students research, design, construct, and then revise projects to construct the best version of the project. He has held competitions and egg drops, mouse trap cars, and other innovative projects. He runs a very hands-on class with a research with a research and design portion being the bookwork and the development, construction, and revision being the hands-on portion. Mr. Cannon has educated himself on much of our new equipment in the Steamway, so he's able to incorporate these into the lessons. Mr. Cannon is a team player. He is coaching the track club for us and is always willing to help with coverage or any of our high school initiatives. Mr. Cannon is on the screen. Mr. Uh, Next, we have uh, Marie Vanderhoof. Uh, Marie Vanderhoof is one of our special education teachers, and I'm extremely pleased to introduce and recommend Marie Vanderhoof for tenure. Marie brings math certification to our special education department. With new social certification going into effect, our program requires special education teachers to also have certification in specific areas they teach. We are fortunate to have someone of Marie's caliber as a teacher who is also has the certifications we need. Marie is very engaging and passionate about her students and teaching. She is dynamic and enthusiastic in regards to teaching, helping, and supporting her students and the staff she works with. Marie has been a, and will continue to be a true uh, asset to the students of Selma High School. Next, we have uh, Kayla Cappuccio as one of our math teachers. Uh, Kayla oh, is. Wow. Yes, and our newest mom, too. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, Kayla is a phenomenal teacher who is in an uh, engaging, energetic classroom. Her students feel safe and welcomed in her room, and she has developed great relationships with them and her peers. Kayla is always willing to help out and take part in school activities. She's been a class advisor uh, every year since she started, and she's also been a grade level team leader. She always takes part in pep assemblies and other school based activities. Currently, Kayla is teaching our Algebra 1 and 1B students, which culminates in the Regents exam that is a graduation requirement. Kayla is a certified New York State master teacher and is presented uh, at different math related conferences. She is very creative with her lessons and makes learning meaningful to the students. And ultimately, she gets the most out of her students. Congratulations, Kayla, on two fronts. <laughs> Uh, and then I think my last one is Judy Norcus. And uh, Judy Norcus is a natural. She is energetic, enthusiastic, organized, and she is a kid magnet. Her delivery of science curriculum is engaging and collaborative and meaningful to students. She has built tremendous relationships with students of all ages. Not only do students she has this year seek her out, but students she has had in previous years and students, honestly, that she has yet to have that come to her classroom at lunchtime to eat and spend time with her. Aside from being a phenomenal teacher, Judy has dedicated herself to Sound Lake and the students we have here. She is a class advisor, a cheerleading advisor, a coach for lacrosse, and a true team player. Judy is always ready to take part in school activities, whether they be assemblies or just being the student's biggest cheerleader. It would be a great pleasure to introduce and recommend Ms. Judy Norcus for tenure. And then we have a Seneca staff member. Okay, I have a Ms. Greer who I teach here today. Um, when I first started at Seneca, she was working as a special education teacher and she was excelling at it. She had differentiated instruction, she was coaching, she was amazing. Uh, but this year she took on the challenge of being our district's first ever emotional coach. Uh, she's full of so much pride and determination. Uh, whenever we challenge her with a new task, she takes it on with a smile and she has it done within a week. Uh, she's committed to the social emotional needs of not only our students, but also our staff. She's continuous, continually meeting with staff and students trying to improve relationships. She's always going above and beyond to do what she can to support. Uh, she has been at the head of many great new programs and professional development for our, our staff this year, and she continues to hold us accountable with our follow through and implementation of programs. She has a lot to offer our district, and we truly appreciate her hard work and dedication to our school. Ms. Shriverson? Yes. Uh, so, Ms. Kyla Shriver is a sixth grade teacher at Seneca. I have truly found her to be a compassionate and dedicated, <laughs> dedicated to the individual needs of her students. Uh, Ms. Shriver has had great success working as a school teacher. She's extremely flexible, strong collaboration and communication with her colleagues and also the parents of her students. Mrs. Shriver is always willing to learn and take on a challenge. She has a strong understanding and passion for children, and her personality shines bright throughout our school. Congratulations, Mr. Driver. And I believe there is one other individual on the call who's being appointed as one of our preferred uh, daily substitutes, Mr. Richard Sasalsa. Um, you guys, Richard, still on the call? Um, yes. 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 Uh, yes. Richard Sala is a graduate of SUNY Buffalo with a certification in 7th through 12th grade social studies. He has a number of years studying and teaching around the Buffalo and Cattaraugus area, including serving, serving as a Native Studies instructor with the Seneca Nation of Indians. Mr. Sala is focused on building relationships with students, making learning enjoyable, focusing on diverse learning needs, and creating an inclusive classroom environment. He's already demonstrated his flexibility and positive attitude as we work through technical glitches during our interview. <laughs> and we are very excited to have him on board as a preferred substitute at that school. That's it. Did you miss anyone? There's one more appointment. Okay. One more appointment. So with Bob leaving, of course, we, we need a new captain of the ship. Uh, so item B is our superintendent appointment and our contract. And so 
be it resolved that in accordance with the education law, section 1711, Dr. Mark B. Wheeler be appointed as the district's next superintendent of schools effective July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2025. And the terms of the contract of employment be approved, which the president of the board is hereby authorized and directed to execute on behalf of the district. And we are going to do a roll call vote. Ray? Oh, I'm sorry. I forget. So we need a motion to approve. Motion by Sue. Second by Brad. Now we can do the roll call vote. Ray? Yes. John? Opposed. Oh. Colton? Oh. Yes. Charles? Yes. Early? Yes. And Free? Yes. It, sound, it sounds like Sue was a little taken aback by my. Yes, I am. Yeah. Well, here's one of the things. This has nothing to do with me, Dr. Beeler as a person, as an educator, as a leader. This has to do with the process. My colleagues know that I was very opposed to the process. And I have voiced my concerns, opinions loudly numerous times. I didn't appreciate the process one bit, but I have full confidence in Dr. Wheeler and his ability to lead our district. So this is not in any way, shape, or form negatively towards him. It is all about the facilitator of the process and how it went about. Thank you. So that's what this is about. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we have five yes and one no, and the motion is carried. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Bob's left a, a long legacy here, and um, I'm sure that you're up for the challenge of continuing, and you keep selling it to going and building a, a great positive direction. <laughs> Uh, just like Free said, we all have confidence um, in you. It's taking over. Um, and it's nice that we, we know what you, you bring to the table, that you are part of the community already. I know you're a member of Wanted Club, Hot Tea Club, Holy Cross Club. <laughs> Everybody, you know, so it's nice that you are part of the community uh, and you relate. To part of the community and are invested in our community again we see what happens when people are invested in our school district and how it blossoms so uh congratulations and welcome aboard as the captain of the ship thank you uh, i really look forward to this opportunity um, i have very much uh, appreciated the opportunity that I've had to work here for the past seven years. Um, I look forward to the opportunity to move us and continue the great work that Bob has done. Uh, most importantly, I have a deep respect for all of the members uh, of the Warrior family here. And uh, I just hope that I can uh, continue to do the good work that we have started and serve each one of our members here to the best of my ability and to the uh, level and extent that they deserve. So thank you. All right. Item nine is our board information report. We have the second reading of policy 7231. Uh, we have our yearbooks. Everybody should have gotten copies of the yearbook from Prospect and Seneca thinking because I love the opportunities in the scene. The kids, the new kids that are coming and how they change. So Thank you very much. Um, we did the dedication for the Prospect Library to have the letter of threat. Thank you to the class of 2023 and their advisor for coming to the meeting tonight and presenting. Then we have our upcoming events. We have finance uh, on 510, Indigenous Ed on 511. And again, as a reminder, 517, please everybody come out and vote. Tell your parents, your friends, everybody you know to come out and vote. I can't tell you how to vote. All I can do is ask you to please come out and vote. Uh, and with that, we do have an executive session uh, for the purpose of uh, litigation, litigation yes, and property. And so thank you again, everybody, for coming. 
students if you have forms that need to be signed, please bring them down and you must be signed. So we need a motion to move the executive session. Motion. Motion by Terry, second by Sue. Sue. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Motion carried. Anybody anticipate action? Yeah. <laughs> 